I was just legit talking for like five minutes to the camera and it wasn't recording. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Josie aka Sir Palantalot and today we are talking about the one and only Hoya Serpents. This is my one of my most favorite Hoyas. This is one of my most favorite plants and how could it not be because it is absolutely stunning. So if you want to learn more about this beauty queen we're gonna talk about the watering, the humidity, soil, propagation, light, flowers, pests, anything that I could think of basically. <laughs> There's gonna be chapters in the timeline below and in the description box if you wanna skip around. So let's talk about Hoya serpents, shall we? So for those of you that are new to this Hoya, this is the Hoya serpents. It's got beautiful tiny leaves that are a little bit fuzzy but it's not really like, it's not fuzz fuzz. The surface of the leaf it has kind of goosebumpy texture, but like really tiny goosebumps, not like gross goosebumps. Either way, the texture of the leaves is amazing. The shape of them is just absolutely adorable. I just adore this plant. I just adore it. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, this is she. She is a super fast grower once you figure out how to take care of her <laughs> and she's just she just seems very happy in my care and she looks beautiful and bushy and this is just this is just what hoya dreams are made of so let's start with talking about the growing medium so this hoya serpents that i have is living in soil i don't know if you'll be able to see that but it's living in soil it's a slightly chunkier mix uh, than straight up cocoa beet and it seems to be pretty happy in soil but it's also possible to grow it in semi-hydro. I propagated Hoya serpents once in pond and uh, before I sent it off to the cellar it started growing and it started thriving in pond so pond would definitely be a good option as well as well as leka. You don't really have to worry about not being able to plant multiple stems into pawn or Leica because this one started with like three stems and now look at how many branches it has. Would you call it branches? I don't know. Basically if you're worried about like having a bushy plant and not wanting to grow it in semi-hydro for that reason then don't worry about that because it's gonna grow just fine. The beauty of Hoyas is that they just branch out so much, this one in particular. So even if you start with just one or two cuttings chances are that it's gonna branch out and it's gonna have multiple vines in no time. <laughs> the good thing about growing it in soil is that you don't have to repot it as often. Naturally, if you grow something in semi-hydroponics, the roots are gonna grow a lot faster. That is not really the case in soil, but the downside of having it grow in soil is that you need to be a little bit more on top of the watering. Whereas with semi-hydroponics, you can just uh, have a water reservoir at all times so that you don't have to worry about checking on the plant. Well, you still have to check on it, but you don't have to add the water as regularly is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so if you tend to underwater your plants, I would definitely opt for semi-hydro as a better option for you. If you do grow it in soil, I would recommend that you water it when the soil is dry but don't wait too long because this is one of the Hoyas that although it's a Hoya and although the leaves are pretty succulent, they do not like to dry out too much. So I always water this one that's in soil whenever, well, whenever I remember, to be honest. <laughs> no, whenever I feel that the pot is light and that the soil is dry. Sometimes you can also tell by the firmness of the leaf whether it needs to be watered. So generally with Hoyas, if you touch the leaf and it's a little bit more bendy than usual, then it probably means that the plant is thirsty. But like I said, I would definitely not let it get that far because this is definitely a plant that prefers being on the less dry side. And ultimately, if you don't water your plant regularly, it's really gonna stunt the growth. So if you water regularly, the plant is not gonna have to conserve energy trying to preserve water and instead it's gonna focus on being beautiful and big. Since we're talking about watering, uh, let's talk about humidity. I have found that the Hoya Serpents definitely likes a lot of humidity 
humidity. Currently, this one is living in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet, which is a little bit extreme. It's like 99% humidity <laughs> most of the time. But before that, before I had the cabinet, it was just living on my shelf where it was usually like 40% humidity, 20% in winter, and it was okay with that. But I, you know, I think 40% is optimal. Anything above that would be even better, but anything below that, the plant might be a little bit slower to grow. One way to know that you're providing enough humidity for your Hoya serpents or Hoya in general is when they start growing aerial roots out of the vines. So if you can see on this vine, um, it has little growth points along the way. Some of them are leaves, but the ones that are bright in color are aerial roots. And uh, Hoyas, I mean plants in general, grow these when the humidity is sufficient or pretty high. So that's how you will know that the humidity levels are definitely enough for your Hoya. There are two ways to grow Hoyas. One way is to let them trail down like mine is, and the other way is to give them a trellis. I feel like the Hoya Serpents is a plant that doesn't necessarily need a trellis. Some of my Hoyas that I have, uh, if they don't have a trellis, they just don't grow or the vine takes way too long to develop new leaves. But with this one, I don't have that issue at all. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have a trellis and the leaves are growing, the vines are coming out all of the time. So it really just depends on your preference. I prefer this one to be trailing down, but that's just because I generally prefer my plants to be trailing. If your goal is to have a bushy plant, I would definitely recommend not trellising it because because that way it's going to put out more new growth points. Whereas if you trellis it, it's obviously going to focus on growing long rather than wide. <laughs> okay, let's now talk about light. So this is probably the most important factor for the Hoya Serpent's success. <laughs> Hoya Serpent definitely likes a lot of light. I tried to grow it in natural conditions once and that didn't work. <laughs> but when I first got it, it was growing underneath a grow light. I have the Monios T8 grow lights and it was about, I don't know, this far away. This was the top of the plant uh, from the grow light and it was thriving under there. It was having the time of its life. Then I moved back here and before I had my cabinet, it was living on the windowsill for a little while and the windowsill only gets like two hours of direct sun and that was not enough for the plant at all. The way that I knew it wasn't enough was because when the new leaves came in, they uh, started yellowing off and eventually didn't make it. So if you notice that your Hoya is growing a new vine, is growing new leaves, but the leaves are dropping off, unless it's full spider mites, it's probably because it doesn't have enough light or it could be a watering issue. But you know, you're, you're gonna have to synthesize that information yourself based on your environment and uh, how you're caring for the plant. But the leaves falling off can definitely be a sign of not enough light. So if you want to grow it in natural light, I would definitely recommend a lot of hours of direct sunlight. <laughs> At least if you live in a similar geographical area to me. I live in the Czech Republic and like I said, two hours of direct sunlight just wasn't enough for the plant. So I would recommend either a west or south facing window. Generally speaking, I feel like Hoyas do a lot better in west or south facing windows and a a lot of them can tolerate lower light conditions, but I feel like this is one of those plants that needs higher light. As for Hoya Serpents propagation, in my experience, Hoya Serpents is super easy to propagate. Whenever I propagate mine, I always like to find a vine that doesn't have a long tendril that is growing, such as this one. So I would probably choose this one. This would be the perfect contestant because it doesn't have a long tendril. You can do either one node propagation propagations or you can do multiple node propagations. I have found that even with multiple nodes, the Hoya Serpents propagates pretty well. The way that I propagate Hoya Serpents is that I cut my stem off, I put it in pawn, I don't lay it on top of it, I just put the end of the cutting in pawn, I put it in a humid prep box underneath a grow light and that worked for me 100% of the time. There are definitely a lot of other options, you can definitely try perlite sphagnum moss. Leica could also work. I would probably choose water as one of the last options for Hoya Serpent's propagation 
just because I feel like this one prefers a little bit of air around the roots. You can definitely try water though or soil if you just want to stick it directly into a pot of soil. But I would say that an important element for uh, making sure that your Hoya Serpens propagate successfully is to provide it with a lot of humidity. So if you normally have it living in like regular room environment, 40 to 50% humidity, then I would definitely put it in a prop box where it has a lot more than that. I would say at least 70%. Obviously these are just ballpark figures, but I would definitely crank up the humidity so that it's a little bit more than 50%. If you're familiar with Hoya propagation in general, then you know that you don't need a node to grow roots. So you could literally just cut off the plant over here, stick this part into the propagation medium and it would eventually root. But it definitely helps when you do have a node. So that's really up for you to decide. Let's talk about some problems. One of them I already touched upon with the light. So what if your Hoya serpents is growing a vine but the leaves aren't developing in the first place. A lot of the times if your leaves aren't developing it's probably a light issue and if you find that your Hoya serpents is just not growing it just doesn't produce a new... I almost said tentacles. If it's not producing a new tendril then it's probably because it doesn't have enough humidity. I have noticed with Hoyas in general that if some of them didn't grow in general room environment after I put them in a humid prop box or put the humidifier on for a little while they suddenly exploded. So if they're not growing at all try to crank up the humidity and hopefully that will solve the problem. <laughs> so those are non-pest related problems kind of. So let's now talk about pests. <laughs> so uh, the most common pest that occurs on uh, Hoyas in general and probably also by extension the Hoya serpents is mealybugs because mealybugs just love succulent leaves. So if you find mealybugs I've got a video on them here so go check that out but uh, like any plant it's definitely susceptible to other pests. I would say that the second one in line would be spider mites, third one maybe thrips but in the first or second place, I would definitely put flat mites. If you've never heard of flat mites, hello. <laughs> so flat mites is a uh, pest that people, including myself, have recently started talking about. And that's because nobody really knew about them for a long time. So if you want to learn more about flat mites, again, I've got a comprehensive video on them over here. So go check that out if you're interested. But flat mites are especially set on munching on Hoyas. So a lot of the times a sign that you might have flat mites on your plant, on your Hoya, is that uh, either the plant isn't producing a new growth point or if it is producing a gr new growth point, the new growth point eventually eventually dries out, dies off. If it does produce a new growth point, uh, the new leaves yellow and fall off. So that's some of the signs to look out for. Uh, and if you know that your yellowing leaves or your non-growth is not caused by light or humidity issues or watering issues, then there is a possibility that it might be flat mites. I had flat mites on a couple of my plants, Hoya Serpents wasn't one of them, but since it's a big plant, uh, when it branches out a little bit, there's a lot of hiding spots for them. So I would definitely not uh, take that out of the equation as a possibility. <laughs> and lastly, let's talk about the flowers. So I haven't had this plant for that long. I think I got it in about March of this year, 2022 and it is now September. And although it has grown a million peduncles in that time, not a single one of them has actually produced bloom. So if you have your Hoya for a while and it grows peduncles, but they don't actually bloom, then in my case, that's completely normal. I uh, did for a while crank up the fertilizer. I fertilize regularly. That's, I didn't even mention that, but you should definitely fertilize regularly if you want your plant to be bushy. But for a while I cranked up on the Flora Micro a little bit so I used the three-part nutrient solution for my Hoyas and one of them Flora Micro encourages um 
blooms and flower growth. So I uh, was using a little bit more of that for this Hoya and that didn't produce blooms anyway. So I think the key to having a bloom is really just waiting for a little while until the plant is established. It looks like right now it's really just focused on branching out and establishing itself as a adult member of the plant society. <laughs> and I think once it's feeling a little bit more secure in itself, it's gonna start blooming and realizing its full potential. That was a beautiful metaphor. I'm so proud of that. <laughs> if you do have any tips on blooming Hoya serpents, let me know. But like I said, I do think it's really just about waiting it out a little bit. And unless the peduncles fall off themselves, I would definitely not cut them off, uh, even if they don't produce blooms, because when a plant produces a peduncle, even if it doesn't flower, the peduncle is gonna try to produce blooms in the future as well. So I would definitely leave them on unless, like I said, they fall off uh, by natural causes. And yeah, just wait it out and see what happens. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give you, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, that's all of my info on this beautiful, magnificent Hoya Serpents. Uh, let me know if you have any additional care tips that I didn't mention. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, show it some love by liking, commenting, subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you here for my next video. Bye!